Welcome to Robert Wood Johnson University Hospitals Health Talk. I'm Dr. Douglas Shashinsky of Robert Wood Johnson Physician Enterprises, Warren Internal Medicine. Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset has brought together a coalition of organizations to focus on improving the health of all of those who live and work in Somerset County. The group called Healthier Somerset is working together to address the health care needs of our community with the goal of making this county the healthiest county in the state. On today's show, we will learn more about Healthier Somerset from our special guest, Serena Collado, Director of the Community Health Department of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset, Mike Kerwin, the President and CEO of Somerset County Business Partnership, and Devagi Patel, the health educator at Montgomery Township Health Department. Welcome to the show. Thank you yeah. all for being here. First, let's start off just so the community knows each and each one of you, who you are and a little background about yourselves. Well, hi, I'm Serena Collado. I'm the Director of Community Health at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Somerset. And I'm also the convener of Healthier Somerset. Um, so I actually got involved um, in public health. My background is public health. Um, I have a concentration in healthcare administration. And uh, the reason I went this route is I really wanted to help people and make a positive impact in, that, in their lives that really ultimately make a difference. Um, and so that's why I chose this profession. I chose this field. Hi, it's great being here. My name's uh, Mike Kerwin. It's my honor to serve as president and CEO of the Somerset County Business Partnership. Uh, my roots in this area go back a long time. My great-grandfather came over, uh, settled in Piscataway, so if anybody recognizes <laughs> the name, that's my family. Uh, for the last nine years or so, we I have um, led the Somerset County Business Partnership. We're a chamber of commerce about to celebrate our 100th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Looking forward to uh, doing that on a year-long basis. Uh, our mission is to lead the business community to a prosperous and sustainable future. Uh, so we are very goal-oriented. We the membership includes uh, most of the major employers in Somerset County, 800 members, and, and we partner with the Somerset County Freeholders. And it became clear to us a few years ago that the next big thing that we had to pay attention to was the cause of health and wellness. So we are happy to participate in uh, the coalition and, and, and move toward making Somerset County the healthiest county in New Jersey. Thank you. And? <clears throat> and my name is Devangi Patel, and I, my background is in public health as well. I went to Rutgers University, um, graduated with my master's in public health, and have always been passionate about community health and education and making a difference and encouraging healthy behaviors at the community level. So. Um, I love what I do at the health department, and it's you know the best opportunity I get to interact with you know various people from various backgrounds in the private, public sector, and in government. Public health, something that we don't hear a lot about, but absolutely, but actually so important. Uh, tell us a little bit about what Healthier Somerset is, how the coalition came together, who's part of the coalition, the goals. You know, it's something that n very few people have heard about, but need to really hear about. Sure. Um, my pleasure. So um, Healthier Somerset is a coalition of over 50 different organizations that are working collaboratively to make Somerset County a healthier place to live and work. Um, basically, we founded it, uh, RWJ uh, Somerset, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset, founded it back in 2010 as a way to work together collaboratively in which we would have a greater impact by working together rather than individually. Um, and since that time, as I mentioned, it's grown substantially, all different organizations from various sectors. So we have education, we have business, we have um, public health, um, we have nonprofit, we have faith-based organizations. So again, we try to involve all different organizations um, so that they can come to the table and have input um, and also impact on the county's overall health. Our goal and mission is to become, as Mike said, the healthiest county in the state. Currently, we're number three. We've teetered between two and three. Um, but there's a lot of great work um, that's being done in our county to make our residents um, the healthiest they can be. Um, we also work on goals that are outlined in our community health improvement plan, which you'll probably be hearing about a little later on in the show. What's really important about this 
is that Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset, rather than wanting to be standing alone, is bringing the whole community together. And by doing that, it's, we're not just keeping ourselves in this little pod. We're trying to move out and bring everyone in to make us healthier. And those include such important initiatives as Complete Streets, Smoke Free Environments, Farmers Markets. Tell Correct. us about these initiatives. Correct. So with Complete Streets, we've had some grants, Healthier Somerset had some grants over the last oh, five years in which we were working with various towns for them to adopt Complete Streets. For those who may not know what Complete Streets is, it's really um, a policy and environmental change which makes the roadways safe for, for pedestrians um, and um, to actually actually exercise, to walk. So it includes you know, implementing or instituting sidewalks or bike lanes, um, bike racks, or even sometimes benches. Um, so the whole goal is to promote physical activity. Um, we have worked with Boundbrooks, um, Manville, Bridgewater, Greenbrook, Somerville, um, and to date I think we have over um, 12 municipalities and the county which have adopted complete streets. Um, so that was one initiative. Um, working with the RCDC, the Regional Chronic Disease Coalition, um, there also was a push to um, have local municipalities who have parks adopt a smoke-free environment, so no smoking in public, um, public parks. Um, and so that was important because obviously um, we know there is a link to secondhand smoking and respiratory health, so we wanted to make sure that we keep our environment safe as well. And again, that number has substantially increased. Also through several of our grants, we did outreach to farmers markets where, again, studies show the more individuals can consume fresh fruits and vegetables, it will help reduce their risks for chronic disease. So it was very important um, that um, we work with the community to have them get their five fruits and veggies a day, the five a day. Um, and so um, we actually instituted voucher um, programs. We would actually go and educate the community and then distribute about a $15 um, voucher to the local farmers markets in the towns I mentioned previously. And we continue to do that today. Um, and for some of these towns where um, you know, they may not have a high an income or underserved um, compared to other towns within the county, it's very, very helpful. Um, and, you know, we're presently working on Boundbrook, South Boundbrook. There's also Franklin, North Plainfield, and Manville. Which brings us to, Mike, uh, how important the businesses part of it is. Yeah, so you mentioned the idea of collaboration, which is a very Somerset County thing to do. We take deep pride in our ability to work together. In fact, we've identified our brand in the county as making vibrant connections. So we, uh, we practice that through the Healthier Somerset Coalition by everybody working together rather than individually because it's a crowded field, health and wellness, and without that co coordination that Serena just talked about, it wouldn't be as effective. So uh, what became clear to us from the business perspective is you know trying to figure out what our role would be and talking to Johnson & Johnson, which uh, is based down the road, as we know, in New Brunswick, but is Somerset County's largest employer they made a very compelling case that making health and wellness a priority is good for business, both from a profitability point of view, productivity point of view, and employee satisfaction point of view. So uh, that became the business partnerships kind of focus as making the business case as to why businesses need to uh, adopt health and wellness as a good economic development strategy. And uh, that's been our role within the coalition. Again, important that the local businesses are involved in it. Yes. So what our niche became, so Johnson Johnson has their own program. They don't, they're doing their thing. But it was really how then can we take some of the resources and approaches that the bigger companies are using and make them available to smaller companies so that they can apply the lessons learned. And a lot of it is, you know, the example you can, I'm sure, uh, relate to this, doctor. It's flu shots. Now, if you calculate the cost of missed sick days versus the cost of just paying for your employees to get a flu shot, it's a pretty no. It's like a no-brainer. So, but you got to get that information out as to things small businesses can do to help their employees stay more healthy.
And we should note that Healthier Somerset actually engages with the Somerset County Business Partnership through our um, workplace wellness program. Right. So we have a lot yeah. of initiatives that show a healthy employee is more productive and there's a decrease in absenteeism. So there's a big part of that. Um, and we have our, uh, we collaborate on our Somerset County um, Business Partnership Health and Wellness Expo. Um, we actually recognize um, in a, companies that have exemplary wellness programs um, throughout the county annually. And then we have a um, workplace wellness forum in the fall as well. So we try to do a lot of things to engage the uh, companies in thinking of health in all policies. So October is health and wellness yes. month? Yes, it's healthier Good. summer set ah, month. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things we did over the years was come up with a health and wellness expo which is absolutely zero cost to attend. But is well attended. Yes, we get over 400 and we're gonna get over 500. Uh, the hospital is one of our, is our lead sponsor. Um, but there'll be vendors there, the table exhibits uh, that basically provide free resources that you can learn about. And then plus we'll have free screenings uh, offered to anyone who attends. So uh, check out our website, uh, www.s cbp.org and uh, sign up. Say, you can say it again. www.scbp.org. Uh, look at future events and you can sign up for the uh, Wellness Expo on October 30th. And it's also on the Healthier Somerset yes. website, which is www.healthiersomerset.org. So the important thing is, again, since the two of you are public health, it's that you've assessed what what we can do to make it healthier. Tell us, how do you assess it? Do you have surveys that you've sent out? And then what do you do with that information? So um, uh, community health needs assessment and even the implementation strategies that result from it, they're, you know, they're required um, of tax-exempt hospitals um, as part of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. And what the community health needs assessment is, it's an excellent opportunity to improve the health of the community and it creates an opportunity to engage the community and maximize transparency and accountability. So the Healthier Somerset group, you know, it's a coalition of so many different people from various agencies and various backgrounds. And we collect qualitative and quantitative data and to get a, help us get a snapshot of what the community looks like. And that's done, you know, there's different layers to collecting that data. So there's for the qualitative piece, there's focus groups, key informant interviews done with community leaders and community members. And we also administer a survey to collect more of the quantitative data. We also look at secondary data sources to get us an, a better idea of what the health trends are and what the statistics are related to certain conditions um, in our community base and comparing them to at the federal and the state level. Very good. Again, your whole <laughs> your background of uh, public health means so much in order to put that data together. This way, we are able to figure out if something's come into the community. You know, there's been recent problems with lettuce and things like that. Yeah. We're at least able to quantify that data and know whether we have a problem or not. When flu season comes, you'll be able to pick up on trends because of the public health background. And it's wonderful that the business community has been so involved in it. You know, I'm sure initially they were a little bit taken about, but now they find out how important it is. And if their employees are healthier, business is better. Correct. Yeah, I, Go ahead. Well, I think the business case is solid. I mean, the, the, the data is in in terms of uh, every dollar you invest in a health and wellness strategy is going to increase your bottom line by a factor of three to four, depending on what the strategy is. Actually, for flu shots, it's probably more yeah. like 100 to one. Exactly, right. And, uh, we've been, and we've been able to show the direct correlation between health and economic development. Um, if you just look at the county health rankings, your kind of wealthiest counties are also some of your healthiest counties. So, and that's what we continue to strive um, to be the healthiest county. So there's and still a lot of work we have to do. Sure, but there's kind of, so there's some kind of some cool synergies because uh, Somerset County is also the heart of pharma country. So we have a lot of uh, pharmaceutical companies that health is part of their mission. Mm -hmm. They're in, <clears throat> in the business of helping making people healthier. 
So we think that if we are successful in branding Somerset County as a great place to live. And work. And work, <laughs> right. Be one of the reasons being that we're the healthiest place in New Jersey, it also kind of ties in with our, our heritage as the head of the, uh, the heart location for these companies. Education programs, mm -hmm. do we have them? Absolutely. We have a lot of them, and not just at RWJ Somerset, but throughout the county. A lot of our partners are offering education pro, um, programs, and they vary. I mean, this is to create awareness, to tell people about health and prevention um, so that we can hopefully keep them well down the road. And topics will vary. Um, we do programs on heart. We've collaborated on cancer prevention programs, stroke prevention programs, um, I mean, you name it, foot, foot issues, diabetes. Um, so, I mean, it's, it, it runs the whole gamut of um, how the community can get involved and actually take responsibility for their own health and wellness. And local health departments, are they involved? Oh, absolutely. All seven of them participate on Healthier Somerset, and Devangi is representing uh, Montgomery Township uh, actually here today. Um, and they're very active um, in the community health needs assessment and improvement plan process. So we couldn't do it without them. And we, you know, we work in collaboration with Healthier Somerset, with our Regional Chronic Disease Coalition, with um, Empower Somerset, and we also take requests for health talks and health presentations from the community. Um, so some of our most uh, requested topics include stress management, mental health has come to the forefront, healthy eating, uh, chronic disease prevention mm -hmm. and management. These are some of our most common, commonly requested topics. Which again goes back to our business uh, community. If we can keep them healthier, mm -hmm. yes. the, then we keep their employees healthier, more profitable business, and if you notice, more businesses opening up because of that. Yeah, we, we had our own focus group. Um, we, we targeted 20 employers and asked them to rank the top issues from an employment perspective because we thought that it was important that we participate in the uh, gathering of information for the CHIP. Uh, and it was interesting, they ranked chronic disease, overweight, obesity, and mental health very close together as the top three issues. Uh, in terms of the employment uh, from an employer's perspective. And then you take that to public health at Somerset's or mm -hmm. Robert Johnson Somerset Hospital. We put on a, uh, a, a health talk about it. We involve the community in it mm -hmm. and gets back to the employees and we get healthier employees working. Right. And I just, right. You, so the synergies, you can see how it's starting to work. It's very, and it all is going to result in programs. For example, the county is now working on a, I get this, bike path. It, it's um, bike, hike, and walk. So when we look at the data, right, you've talked a lot about the data. Um, you know, we start off with that secondary data, which is just reports from different organizations, like what are the hospital admissions showing, what is, you know, the American Heart statistics showing, et cetera. And then when we get the community survey, direct community feedback, we see where we're lacking information and so and or where there's trends and if we need to expand upon those trends then we have focus groups so the bike hike and walk was one because access to care was coming up um, a lot in in the data so we're partnering with somerset county planning um, because access through walking paths right, right. Um, can sometimes be limited some of the walking paths don't connect to different towns and the county itself is working on doing that so it was really important to um, involve them in this process so that we can look at access issues in addition what that that initiative will do it increases um, individuals ability for physical activity, right? Yep. And um, we know through our needs assessment that um, the findings were that our main areas of need are mental health and substance abuse, chronic disease, obesity, and access to care. So again, th that is part of the solution and that's why some of those focus groups were selected. Uh, again, the data right. gives, us, brings, gives us a conclusion right. mm -hmm. where we can now make a change. Right. Mm -hmm. The change now improves the overall health of the community, 
Got it. overall health of the employees, and also, as we talk about the streets being be better, mm -hmm. the bike paths being better, now people actually will go by the businesses and may actually stop in at the businesses that they didn't have access to. Right. Yeah. So good data drives good policy decisions, which is done in collaboration mm -hmm. between all members of the community, uh, and then things start getting done. And what's exciting about this uh, hike, bike, and walk. There you go. <laughs> uh, we, we have inherited uh, investments made for over the decades in Somerset County for open space, trails, mm -hmm. uh, uh, great park system. Mm -hmm. And so what will emerge from this study is, is an easier ability to access that great outdoor living and exercise options. And if there's you know, little... Uh, strategic investments that we need to connect trails or make it easier, we'll do that based mm -hmm. on the right data. Mm -hmm. So it's everybody supporting all these initiatives um, to have a greater impact. And I always like to use the example. If we had done it individually right. to move that pendulum, it's like standing on a mountain right. by yourself, shouting across to another mountain that's miles away, right? We have greater opportunity and ability to be heard if there are 50, 100 people standing on the mountain shouting the same message it is most likely to be heard or that mountain most likely to be moved by working together than alone. Or you just have a bucket patrol of the, <laughs> <laughs> the water over. creative. I like that. <laughs> but again, it all boils down to the fact that we have leadership at Robert Wood Johnson Somerset that puts together the public health data. We have data from both federal, state, but even better is the local. Mm -hmm. We can now take the local data, individualize it, and then bring it to the community business associates. The business mm -hmm. associates understand mm -hmm. how important this data is. We can now vary things. We can now change things, which improve the health, safety, benefit of the uh, community, which then improves the business environment. The business environment then comes back. We get even beta, better data. Now we can go the next step and keep on improving mm -hmm. it. And in this time and age now where we hear all about, for instance, mental health being so important, mm -hmm. being that that's a problem as well as substance abuse, we now have the ability to take that data and do something with it. Again, you guys at Public Health are the ones who are bringing us that data. We could never work on this without the work and involvement that the two of you do. Well, thank you. Take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the other thing that's so important is that we've got a terrific business partner who's willing to listen and make changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks for recognizing. We should give a shout out to the hospital. Uh, Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital, Somerset. Thank you. <laughs> uh, has really done a great job and uh, has reaffirmed their commitment to being a great community hospital and providing a resource to everyone. And I think one of the ways they're doing that is being the kind of the host of uh, the Healthier Somerset uh, Coalition. So I want to acknowledge their leadership and support. Uh, it's been great. It is actually quite important that a community hospital, which employs a hell, heck of a lot yes. of people in this area, it's not the biggest employer. We do know that Johnson Johnson's the bigger right. employer, but yes. they do work in coalition with the community. The leadership understands that they're not a separate entity. They're part of the whole county itself. They understand that the coalition of public health, businesses, data, that all of that makes us a better community. And they understand that if we use that data, we can become the healthiest county in the state. And even though we are not the wealthiest county in the state, we can use all of this data to become healthier than some of those wealthier counties. Correct. You're absolutely right. I mean, we understand the fact that, you know, we need, we're part of a larger system, and it's that system that ultimately impacts individuals' lives and health. Um, what we public health professionals like to call the social determinants of health, right? right. That's housing, transportation, education, employment, right? These are all things that, you know, if people are limited by that, if they don't have a job, they don't have access to care, they typically won't have medical insurance. So that impacts their overall health. So it's by working together and with all different agencies who are part of this larger system, we can make those necessary changes to enhance people's lives and overall health and well-being. 
which again, it starts in the leadership, but it comes down to all the individuals who work as part of this. This couldn't have worked without you doing your public health part, couldn't have worked without you doing your public health part, and certainly couldn't work without the business community doing their parts. It's a coalition that improves the health and wellness of Somerset County. Correct, it's everybody working together, and that's what ultimately what will hopefully make us the healthiest county in the state. So this would be a good time to invite anyone who's listening to support our cause. Uh, we are serious. This is a big deal. Uh, health and wellness is the next big thing, as I like to say. And we think that uh, if we're successful working together to make Somerset County the healthiest uh, county in New Jersey, that it would be We'll have to celebrate when we get to that point, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so when you get the contact info for getting involved, Serena, if oh, you want. So they could, um, if they want, they can reach out to us. Um, we have a website, healthiersomerset.org, um, or they can email at info at healthiersomerset.org. Or, or, yeah, I think it's .org. Um, uh, also, my contact information can be provided. Um, Serena Collado, uh, or uh, I'm at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset, um, and in my email is serena.collado at rwjbh.org. So either way. Thank you all for being here, and thank you for what you do for this community. This community is so much better because of all of the input that you guys have in it. Thank you. Great thank being you. Thank you for joining us here today. This concludes today's episode of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital's Health Talk. Please remember the opinions expressed here by our medical experts are not a substitute for medical advice from your own physician. If you need a physician, please call us at 1-888-MDRWJUH. For more information about Healthier Somerset, please visit the website at www.healthiersomerset.org. Thank you all for being here, and thank, thank you, you for what you, what you contribute to health care. Thank you.